Hello friends, today I am going to introduce your new coding companion for Android development that is Studio Bot. It's powered by artificial intelligence and can understand natural language. So you can ask development questions in plain English. This Studio Bot can help Android developers to generate code, create test cases, find relevant resources, learn best practices, write code comments and many more. But as mentioned in the Android developer page, StudioBot is still in early experiment stage and might sometimes provide inaccurate, misleading or false information while presenting it confidently. So let's see how to use this StudioBot and how much helpful it is for the Android developers. First check whether StudioBot is available in your country. Currently it is available in 180 countries. Let's search for India. Ok, it is available in India as well. Now go back. To get the studio boat, we need to download the latest canary version of the Android Studio Jellyfish. Because this studio boat is still in early experiment and not available in current stable version that is Iguana. However, expected in Jellyfish stable version. Ok, for now click on this Android Studio Canary version link. So this is the preview release build. Click on download Jellyfish. Come down. Accept terms and conditions. Here select the Android Studio version variant based on your Apple chip type. Go to Apple icon. Select about this pack. My Mac contains Apple silicon chip. So here I am downloading Mac with Apple chip version. Download started. Ok. Download completed. Go to Downloads folder. Currently I have Android Studio Iguana stable version installed on my Mac. But no need to worry, preview version will not replace the stable version. We can have both stable and preview versions side by side. Double click on this DMG file. This is Android Studio Jellyfish preview version. Drag this to Applications. Ok, copy to Applications. Now go to Applications folder. See here, I have both Iguana stable version and Jellyfish Canary version installed. Ok, open this preview app. Click open. Select do not import settings and click ok. This is setup wizard. Finish setup process quickly as how we do it for Android Studio stable version. Ok, click finish. See, this is Jellyfish Canary 13 version. Ok, let's open a project. Trust projects. Project loaded. Ok, now let's see how to access Studio Bot. To open Studio Bot, either click on this tool window option on right menu or go to view tool windows. Here select Studio Bot. To use Studio Bot, first we need to log into Google account. Click on this, login, select Gmail account. Ok, click continue, allow submit data. Yes, success. Now come back to Android Studio. See the status is authorized. Click next. Next, you must be at least 18 years of age to use Studio Bot. Ok, select, click next. The first option is you don't need to share your code to use Studio Bot. But some features like AI code completion will not be available in this mode. In the second choice, Studio Bot will send code from your project to Google in order to offer better suggestions and responses. Choose any one option. Here I am selecting the first option, do not share code base. Click finish. Yes, now we can start using Studio Bot. Let's see how it answers for our questions. Let's start with some basic questions regarding Android Studio IDE usage. My IDE is in dark theme. So let's ask how do I change my Android Studio to light theme. Submit the question. Ok, Studio Bot responded. Open Android Studio, click on File Settings or Android Studio Preferences on Mac OS. Then in the left pan, select Appearance and Behavior, Appearance. Ok, 
I am using Mac OS so I should go to Android Studio preferences first. Select Android Studio. Oh, there is no option for preferences. Instead, there is a settings option. For the first basic question only, it could not guide me properly. Okay, let's click on settings. Appearance and behavior. Go to appearance. Here we can update the theme. Okay, this info is correct. But only thing is, it gave me preferences instead of settings. Okay, let's ask second question. Related to Android Studio only. Because most of the times we will be searching for these Android Studio options. So, second question is, where do I find the CPU profiler in Android Studio? The answer is, make sure your project is connected to a device or emulator. Click on Analyze Profile CPU Profiler. Okay, let's run the project in the emulator. Now check for analyze profile CPU profiler, but I am not able to see the analyze option anywhere in the menu options or tool windows. See? Okay, I cannot find analyze option, so at least check the keyboard shortcut. Use control plus alt plus P or command plus options plus P on Mac OS to open the profile menu and select CPU profiler. Okay, let me use command plus option plus P. It opened uh, the last settings window and I could not find CPU profiler option here. Okay, let's do one thing. Ask the same question once again and see how it responds. My apologies for the previous response which was incorrect. To find the CPU profiler in Android Studio, click on view tool windows profiler. Okay, go to view, tool windows, here we can find profiler options. So, it is giving two different answers for the same question. Means, we cannot trust this studio bot completely as of now. Okay, now let me ask some common developer doubt. What is the best way to add interstitial ad implementation to my app? To add interstitial ad implementation, create an ad unit ID into your AdMob account, blah blah blah. Add the Google Mobile Ads SDK to your app. And the Google Ads SDK dependency which was shown here is old one. The latest version is 23.0.0 means Studio Bot is not up to date. Okay, then initialize the Mobile Ads SDK, create an interstitial ad object and the suggested line of code is written in Kotlin. Next, set the ad unit ID, load the ad and show the ad. And there is a note, make sure to test your ad implementation. So, it has just given the steps to handle the interstitial ads. But actually, when I asked the question, what is the best way to add uh, interstitial ads, I expected some proper way of implementation steps with some best practice tips to handle them. And also, the code suggested here is in Kotlin. So, to get the code in Java, we need to ask the same question mentioning Java. Okay, now the code is in Java. Okay, now ask another question. How to save images to the gallery in Android? To save images to the gallery in Android, request storage permissions with write external storage permission. Create a file object for the image, write the image data to the file, add the image to the gallery. And there is an explanation for all those above steps. And I think in this answer also some steps are missing. Like this permission has to be added to manifest file. And handle request permission results are not mentioned here. This means we cannot rely on studio about answers for these type of questions. Okay, now let's ask about XML files. XML code to add a round rectangular background. To add a round rectangular background in XML, use the following code. Here is the XML code snippet. You can use these icons to insert a new drawable file, copy the code or insert the code at cursor point. Okay, click on this insert a new drawable file. Go to resource drawable folder see there is an xml file added automatically 
open this this is the same code snippet this is good but there is an error with color resource value so we need to add manually this color value in the values colors xml file okay the explanation is given and also usage is also given to add this background to view we can use it like this android background with the drawable file name but the drawable name again we need to modify here before using it in the end note it says you can change the your background color and 16 dp values to customize the appearance of the background this much is okay but still there are many improvement areas and overall the studio bot answers are not satisfactory okay now let's see how to use the studio bot for code modifications opening menus class okay selecting this show pop up menu method right click go to studio bot select document code now submit but be careful while using this feature because this code will be sent to google so if you are working for a company then you should not share the code without your company's permission okay see the documentation was written for the method with inline comments this is impressive but verify once before integrating to your project now add this code to menus class make sure the cursor position because on using this icon the code will be copied to the cursor point okay select this code copied now remove this selected code but there are some errors on menu item click is added with toolbar menu item so remove this okay error is gone now let's check the comment code function select a function studio bot comment code okay same way as document code the whole function is written with comments and java doc now copy the code and overwrite the function now let's check explain code feature okay the explanation is given for the overall function and also for the important checks in the function and there are some additional note points also okay now ask for improvements because i can see some warning indications on menu item id usage okay go to studio bot select suggest improvements submit here are some suggestions to improve the code the first one is use constants for menu item ids here i am using resource ids directly in switch cases so instead of using raw ids for menu item ids it is suggesting to define constants for them this makes the code more readable and maintainable okay the next suggestion use string resources for toast messages okay here i hard coded the text in java classes so it is asking me to add them as string resources in an xml file which simplifies the message modifications and it has defined the string resource also for me okay there is an option called merge resources okay on clicking this the strings are added to strings.xml file but again we need to check for any errors and resolve manually i think this could have been done by studio bot okay no problem use a switch expression like this with menu id constants and in the fourth point it suggested me to consider using a sealed class for menu items but here i actually expected the better way of using these menu item ids as these ids are becoming non final constants from gradle version 8.0 onwards in the gradle dot properties this android dot non final resource ids is defined with the value false because from agp version 8.0 onwards by default the resource ids will be non final so we cannot use them as constants in switch case statements see suppose if i remove this property all these menu item ids creating errors in the code because these are not constants by default so i have expected the other way to handle this problem and as usual studio bot disappointed me 
So finally, my opinion is Studio Bot is not at ready and it can provide the code that is not optimal or incomplete. As for now, we cannot completely rely on it and we should always double check Studio Bot's responses and carefully test and review code for errors, bugs and crashes before releasing. So let me know your thoughts also on Studio Bot in comments box. If you think this video was helpful, then please like the video and subscribe to IRECA Tech Solutions. Thank you.